I'm Diana Falzone, and this is 4 for 4 SciTech. Jawbone has announced new fitness trackers, but are these doomed by smartwatches, Samantha? A lot of the technology that's already in fitness trackers will be available in smartwatches when more swap smartwatches like Apple eventually come out. And it sort of reminds me a little bit of what e-readers. When the mm -hmm. Kindle first came out, uh, it was a great product, but then eventually it was sort of replaced by tablets. Sure, some people still have e-readers, and you could say that there's always a place for it, but something bigger uh, and more dynamic came along, and mm -hmm. I sort of think that's what's going to happen here. You know, when the category first emerged, I sort of had a winner-takes-all, zero-sum approach to it. I thought there could be only one yeah. fitness tracker to rule them all. Um, now I think we're going to see a range of different products with different differentiating factors at a variety of price points. So I'm kind of a believer in saying that a lot of these companies could succeed. Mm -hmm. I think that the choice is going to be key here with the new jawbone. The whole the up three, which has got like these detailed sleep monitoring technologies that can handle three different phases of sleep. I think that's a good example it's of a what. much mm. sleeker design. Exactly. Well, we'll have it to looks see better. how they fare for sure. But it does seem like the marketplace is saturated. May the best watch win. Elsewhere in wearable tech, there's been talk that smart glasses will never be more than a niche product. Gabrielle, what's your thought on this? Well, they look so goofy still at so this goofy. point that when I see someone on the street, I'm like, what are you even thinking? Um, but. I've heard so many compelling use cases in a business mm -hmm. standpoint, in terms of healthcare, retail, construction, that I really think that we could see that adoption rise and then people might start using them in the real world as well. I think it's true that you know these things have started out in the same way that mobile phones did. They were a business tool and then they kind of they evolved into a consumer thing. But I don't know, I think for me they're gonna have to be really much more aesthetic. Well, the they're Google Glass Ray Ban partnership or Luxottica partnership seemed really promising. But yeah. you know, when it finally delivers and when people start really buying it. So for me the jury's still out on Samantha? these. Samantha? Yeah, I think the aesthetic is really important too. Even when you look at a smartwatch every time you look at it you're reminded why you have it. So this is so in your face and Google did a really good job out of the, the gate and kind of creating buzz with this product. Mm -hmm. But now a lot of people just don't really care anymore. I also think you have to negate the worry about privacy concerns mm -hmm. because when I see someone wearing, let's say, a, a smart glass or a Google glass, I think, are they spying on me? Are they spying on the person next to me? It does make you feel rather uncomfortable mm -hmm. and people have been walking into walls wearing them. So that's another thing. <laughs> Safety. The Netherlands is trying solar sidewalks. Could that work in the U.S., James? I think so. I mean, Europeans and their love of renewal, renewable energy it could come over here. And this is you know, a project in the Netherlands. It's a mm -hmm. 230 feet long bike lane that's basically solar powered. It's not cheap, but it's extremely robust. And you know, these technologies have to start out somewhere. Yes. They have to be trialed. And so let's see where it goes. I feel pretty positive about yeah. it. In Boston, there's this company, Sufa, that has come out with these solar powered benches. So we're already starting to see cool. some of this technology emerge in the United States. I think if it works in the Netherlands on a larger scale, it will come to the US. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, I think it's great using this in this way. Um, George Washington University, their Virginia campus, actually already has a solar walkway. And when you walk on it, it generates energy that actually powers the lights around it. And I think, again, using technology in this way is a really smart thing to it's do. It's extremely innovative. It is the way of the future. It's environmentally savvy. And honestly, the price tag shocked me in terms of how low it was. When you think about trying to pave an entire sidewalk with solar panels, you're thinking millions and millions of dollars. And it was really between one and three. So if we can pave the world with solar panels for a few million, we're looking pretty good. Now, is the new selfie app groundbreaking or hitting rock bottom, Gab? I mean, it's called selfie, so I think inherently <laughs> this is the lowest of the lows. I don't know where Hold we on, go from Hold on, let's all take here. a selfie right now. Um, I personally really don't take selfies that often, um, so it's not for me. But if there's a community and people seem to like it, I don't mm -hmm. care. And it's supposed to be built around a cultural respect, which is, you know, something that's critical and that's needed at the moment in a lot of this social media stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know the celebrities on there. I don't know. Has anyone Michael Strahan, yeah, yeah, apparently, is one. This? But I don't know. I think it's pretty positive. Yeah. I think that uh, the demographic for Snapchat, this is a perfect sort of uh, integration for them, too. Uh, it's sort of fun and light, and I think that but, um, you know, it's, it could potentially be a little bit more engaging than Snapchat, mm -hmm. but we'll just see whether or not it really takes off. Well, a pro of this is that if you're trying to, let's say, 
catfish anyone. It's harder to do because you're doing Vine video s kind of things. Mm -hmm. But a con is this is another way for people to get in trouble with their private pictures and videos being released because they don't want to be seen for the world. Now you know what we think. Tell us what you think on Twitter with the hashtag 444SciTech.